The drone is a male honeybee. Unlike the female worker bee, drones do not have stingers. They gather neither nectar nor pollen and are unable to feed without assistance from worker bees. A drone's only role is to mate with an unfertilized queen. I haven't been flying FPV drones for a while now, so I decided to pick it up and see if I remember how to fly it. Since the winter is coming soon and just like the bees I will go into hibernation because if I don't my hands will freeze over and I won't be able to fly. But before we go out on one of our last flies of the season, let's check if any of these batteries are about to explode and create a fire. So let's play a game. Which one of these batteries do you think is most damaged? Is it the battery number one? Battery number two? Battery number three? Or maybe even battery number four? Remember to never ever poke your batteries with sharp objects. If you do, they may explode. If you guessed battery number 4 or number 2 then you are correct, because both of them are a little bit puffy from my last crashes. So let's charge them up. How do I know if I'm plugging them in correctly while holding a camera? Well, if it doesn't make a spark, that means I'm good. Now remember to not charge your batteries too fast or it might explode. By too fast I mean having a high current. What is a current? I think it's a type of currency. Don't ask me, I'm not an electrician, elect, electrician, 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 something. Remember to charge your goggles battery and your controller battery as well. If you don't, the drone will fly away and you won't be able to get it back home. Something is missing here. Hmm, where did I put my GoPro? Here it is. Hope it has enough battery. And it does. Great. You heard that? Batteries are already finished charging up. It only took a couple of seconds. I guess that's the advantage of charging with high currency. Plug it out and we are ready to go. Do you have any idea how difficult it is to do things with one hand? Oh, you do? You only have one hand? Um, I'm sorry, I didn't know that. After that, pack everything nicely inside your backpack and you're ready to go. Don't forget the tools. Now, how do I fly this thing again? I'm going to a new location that I found nearby, where there are no bees. I mean, humans. No humans. There is this fancy looking bench, and by fancy I mean that it's looking like something a kid would make out of spare wooden parts he found in his dad's garage. It was raining outside, and you might be wondering, isn't it bad for the drone? And to that I say that I am not a statistician. You mean electrician? Ah yes, no, I mean, I'm not an electrician. But if electric eels could be fine living underwater and being able to kill animals with analysis, no, I mean toxicity, no wait, they are electrical. So that means they can kill with electricity. Imagine if we took all the electric eels and used them to power the city. Would that be called electricity? Get it? Get it? Get it? Anyways, what was I talking about? Ah yes, flying the drone while it's raining. I think as long as the batteries are not damaged or punctured so that the water can get inside, it will be fine. Now, let's get to the flying. As I told you, I haven't been flying for a while, so I was feeling rusty. But I managed to quickly get a hang of it. Guess it's true what they say, it's all in the fingers, or maybe muscle memory, I'm not sure. Feels good to be flying again and hitting gaps, but right when I started getting comfortable, the drone went into failsafe mode, which means it drops down from the sky because it thinks something is wrong. gonna fall down there. It's not a bomb. It's a drone. Wow, I almost fell. It's so damn slippery. And why did it just disconnect for no reason? I think I got behind a tree and the signal got really weak and it went into failsafe mode which is basically just drop down because it Lost connection? I don't know man, technology. 
after that incident I decided to spice things up by trying something new. Because flying around some trees is not dangerous enough for me. Also, sometimes these trees get in your way when you're flying, so I thought what I can do or what modification I could do to my drone so that all the bees, I mean trees, would run away when they see my drone. And then I had an idea that is totally safe and legal. By mounting this object underneath the drone, it would create an aerodynamic flow around the drone, which basically means it would glide through the air with no resistance. Ah, now I understand why we just ignore air resistance in physics classes. Also, can we just agree how cool of a word that is? Aerodynamics? I feel so smart saying that. Using my exceeding engineering skills to mount this object to the drone, I was ready to put it to the test. First, I checked how deep of a mark it would leave if I hit it with my hand. Which was really small because this tree thing is really strong or maybe because my hands are cold and weak. What remains to do now is to actually try and fly it into a tree thing. It's a dead tree, so we're not killing any living trees, it's we're flying into a dead tree. So I'm thinking maybe we can try and crash into here somewhere. These are the marks from before and hitting and you can clearly see them. So I'm gonna try and hit it somewhere down here so we can see if it makes a mark. Hit it there. I will not be standing there. Maybe move a little bit to the side. Now I was ready to fire the drone at the target. And the first try I missed it completely. Since the center of gravity had now changed, the drone was difficult to control. Also, can I just say how scary it looks in the goggles? It's basically like seeing your own nose, but more sharp and pointy. My second attempt was more successful and we hit it right in the eye. The tree thing, not the eye. It would be horrible if we hit it in the eye. Yeah. Okay, that was a perfect hit. Okay, where did we hit? Come on. According to the goggles, I hit it exactly here. So this is the mark. It's not that big. This is hardwood, so I don't think it will be able to make a big mark. And I have no idea how it compares to human body because I'm not planning on killing anyone. Just to see if it's possible. And I think it is. Okay, so compared to the drone hit, this is as hard as I can hit it with my hand. So you can see it's even smaller compared to this one. Hitting it hard with my hand leaves a smaller mark than it hit with the drone. You can see it's not that deep compared to the previous one. It's a little bit bigger. I forgot what was the point of this video again? Ah, yes, FPV vlog. Yeah, we, we are flying drones. Yes, just flying drones, just your normal. FPV drone flying practice with no humans nearby because we no oh my god oh fuck oh what is this it's all safe is what I'm trying to say and that concludes my video I'm trying to come up with what is the conclusion for this video, but I'm not really sure what this video is about. I guess don't attach dangerous things to your drone and run away if you see one with something attached to it. But I guess that's what people in Middle East are already doing, running away from drone strikes. Psst. Hey, hey, consider subscribing. I'm trying to reach 500 subscribers before the end of this year. It would be make me really happy if you liked and subscribed. I thank you 